All right. Uh, so in our last classes, uh, we looked at vectors, essentially some vector addition, adding some vectors again by tearing them apart using their horizontal and vertical components of two vectors, combining them to find the, both the horizontal and vertical component of what I would call, well, it is called your resultant vector, the result of adding the two vectors together, and being able to figure out the magnitude and direction of that final vector. All right, and then we use that to find, uh, well, in cases where we were dealing with distance and displacement. Now, if that confused you a little bit or you had some issues there, this is kind of like a second shot at it, and you'll, you'll see why here, hopefully, uh, by, by the end of the class, all right? So you kind of get a second shot at that distance and displacement, uh, because what we're going to look at today is speed and velocity, something you did in grade 11, just like distance and displacement. The difference in this unit, uh, as opposed to grade 11, we're doing all the same things that you, I hope you did in grade 11, except for you always did it in one dimension in grade 11. In grade 12, what we do is we do it in one dimension and two dimensions. That's the difference between uh, grade 11 and grade 12 in this first unit. All right, so now when we get to speed and velocity, uh, the first thing is the formula for speed is V equals, Delta D divided by uh, delta T or T, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Now, that means speed is equal to delta D, which no arrow means distance, divided by our time. And because, well, time definitely doesn't have a direction, uh, although some people go backwards, <laughs> uh, but delta D is distance, which is a scalar. And so because delta D, distance is a scalar, Speed is a scalar. And again, to recap, that means it only has magnitude, size, no direction on it. All right, now velocity is the formula V is equal to delta D divided by T or delta T, doesn't matter. Same thing, same formula. It looks like it anyways, except for this. There's an arrow over it. So what that means is we're talking about, number one, a vector here. But again, this comes down to the other day where this delta D is displacement, which is not the total distance traveled, but yet how do we get from where we started to where we finished? No matter where we walked, how do we get from where we start to where we finish in terms of both size and direction? That's what displacement's all about. So like I said, if you didn't, uh, if you got a hung up on a few things on last class, well, we're going to have to figure these out again, so it'll help you out. All right, now, like I said, the difference between grade 11 and grade 12 is dimensions. We're adding a dimension in grade 12. And so in one dimension, to figure out the delta D, you've got to go D2 minus D1, all right? So you can figure out a bunch of different displacements by using what's called those are position vectors. And again, they're position vectors because there's no delta sign in front of them. And we're going to get to those. I'm going to do, a, I'm going to do an example of that. All right, now, when you get into two dimensions, typically what happens is you're giving a bunch of displacements. All right, and so what you have to do to figure out your resultant displacement, so I could put a little R there, that's typical, resultant, the result of adding a bunch of displacements. So D1, D2, I don't know, this could keep going on and on and on, depending on how much your object or person moved. All right, so. How do we use these formulas? That's what we're going to get to. So we're going to start off with a grade 11 type question, which again is all about one dimension. So uh, I actually wrote it out this time out. So uh, example one, an airplane, which is located 180 kilometers east of the airport, takes three hours to land in a cornfield, which is 320 kilometers west of the same airport. Find the speed. All right, and B, the velocity. So the first one, the speed, again, we're looking at our formula here, V equals delta D divided by T. All right, so time, I should have actually written this over here, but here we go. Time, well, it, this whole trip took uh, three hours to happen. All right, now, the distance that it traveled. Now, when we figure out this distance, what we are going to use is how far did we actually travel, all right? So we moved, if I draw a little diagram here, 
Again, I got my compass rose here. Uh, never enter stinky washrooms to keep things square here. So we have what's called position vectors. And why I know they're position vectors is because they're talking about where this plane is relative to somewhere else. It doesn't tell me that it moved a certain spot. It tells me where it was and where it ended up. What position it had, what position it ended up. All right, so we have our airport here. All right, and it starts off, I'm gonna call this, uh, I don't know, ooh, point one, I guess. That's 180 kilometers east. All right, and it ends up going over here to point two, I guess I'll call it, which up here is 320 kilometers west. So if I look at that small diagram there and I want to simply look at uh, how, did, how far did it travel, well, this object first went from point one here to point two, so it traveled 180 kilometers to get to the airport, and then it flew past the airport another 320 kilometers. So again, all I care about is the total distance, because that's what we're finding here, not displacement. And so if I add 180 plus 320, I get five kilometers. And so if I'm finding speed, I can now plug in my values. I've got my distance. It traveled 500 kilometers. And I divide that by three hours, which is our time. Run out a little bit of room here. And so my velocity, if I take my 500 kilometers and divide it by three hours, uh, what do I get here? Type it in, I get 100, oh, we got some decimals again. We always go to two decimal places, 166.67. Always need to write down the units. And uh, for those of you uh, who have struggled with units, division always means per in English. So it's kilometers per hour, in case you're confused. All right, so this thing's going 166.67 kilometers an hour. Again, it's a plane, so it's not going that fast for a plane. All right, now, next up, we get to velocity. A little bit different uh, in that, again, with velocity, we're looking at V is equal to delta D divided by T. All right, now, this is displacement. All right, this delta D, so it's a little bit different. And what we're looking at with our delta D to figure out the displacement is that I'm going to use my two position vectors here. Now, again, it says D2 minus D1. Well, my first point is position vector is 180 kilometers to the east. And I'm going to subtract uh, my second position vector. Oh, sorry. Messed up. I got my, I got to write my D2 first. Let's get rid of that. Got to get them in the right order. Otherwise I'm going to get the wrong answer. So again, there's my D2 is first, which is 320 kilometers west minus my D1, which is 180 kilometers east. Now, here's what happens with our vectors is that when you're dealing with direction, you have to label one direction positive, one direction as negative. All right, so now what I typically do 99% of the time because of my compass rows here, again, I always make north and east positive, west and south negative, because it's just like a Cartesian plane. All right, so in this case, when I look at my delta D, my displacement, that 320 kilometers west, because I, I always determine west as being negative, I'm going to put down a minus 320. There's a minus sign in this equation, so I'm going to put that down. And then I have my 180 kilometers east. Again, I say east is positive, so I write down a positive 180. So that minus sign, again, is from the equation. It's not from the east part. All right, now, my delta D, my displacement, I take minus 320 and I minus 180. I get minus 500. But again, displacement is a vector, and so I have to write it as such, which means magnitude and direction. So I know the magnitude is 500 kilometers. Got to make sure I put my units in there. But the minus sign tells me the direction is west. 
All right, so there's my displacement. All right, now I'm going to plug that information into my equation. A little bit more work, that's what happens with uh, vectors. All right, so what I end up with is uh, my displacement here is 500 kilometers west divided by the three hours. And this time, our velocity is, well, I already have 500 divided by three here, which is 166.67 kilometers uh, an hour. Whoops, run out of room here. And again, velocity needs direction because it is a vector. So in this case, uh, the magnitude of my speed and the magnitude of my velocity are actually the same. And the reason for that is, is that the object, the plane here did not change direction. So if your object does not change direction at all, there is a chance that your speed and velocity, the magnitudes could be equal. Doesn't happen very often, but it can. Again, that's if your object does not change direction. All right, now that's a one dimensional problem. Grade 11 type question. Now we get into a grade 12 type question, again with two dimensions. Now I won't be able to write this out, so hopefully you have the note in front of you from the website. We'll try to write as much information as I can get down here, but uh, if you're having a look at the completed note, uh, you probably realize I'm gonna need the room. Again, when you get into two dimensions, you get into twice as much stuff going on, if not more. All right, so during this uh, example two, it says during a given uh, play during a football game that lasts seven seconds, uh, the QB runs a first displacement of, let's see here, this is our first displacement, D1, which is four meters, uh, 40 degrees east of south. All right, that's our first displacement. Uh, then the quarterback uh, changes uh, direction and then moves another displacement here, D2, of 16 meters. And the angle is 30 degrees north of east before being tackled, unfortunately. Determine the quarterback's a, speed, and of course, B, the displacement, and then the velocity. So we'll get to that. And I guess I should write up here this play, uh, this play delta T or T. Again, those are interchangeable, uh, seven seconds. All right, so there's our question there. We're going to find the speed, the displacement, and we're going to find the distance too when we find speed, and finally the velocity. All right, speed. Ah, we'll get the easy one out of the way first. All right, with speed, again, we're looking at V delta D over T. All right, well, the time is seven seconds. The distance, how far did this object or this person run? Well, they ran four meters in one direction. They ran 16 meters in another direction. And so if you add those two, this uh, quarterback ran 20 meters total. All right. If I divide those two, 20 divided by seven, that's got to be two point something, uh, 2.8 something maybe, not 2.86. And again, your units are meters per second. Done. All right. Now we get to B, which is find the displacement. Now we have two displacements in this case. And so what I'm going to find, what again I call delta dr, the resultant displacement from these two runs. All right, which means if I want to find the resultant, I got to take d1 and I have to add d2. Again, this is something we did last class. So again, if you had struggled with it or kind of missed out on some of the details, get a second shot at it. All right, so we're going to add these two displacements right here. And because they're in two dimensions, 
what we're going to do again, just like we did the other day, is I'm going to take them. I'm going to find the horizontal components of each. I'm going to find the vertical components of each. Combine them because when I combine them, they'll be the vertical components of the resultant, the horizontal components of the resultant. And then from that, I'm going to use the little Pythagorean theorem and trigonometry to find my resultant uh, vector. All right. So it's going to be a little bit of work here, just like it was the other day. All right, so uh, let's see here. Let's go with uh, delta D1. Let's tear it apart. All right, so again, what I like to do is uh, draw just a little diagram so I don't get myself mixed up here. All right, so again, I'm going to draw my compass rows. And so I have uh, never enter stinky washrooms. Again, just a little diagram here so that I get my trigonometry right. All right, now four meters. 40 degrees east of south. So again, that means 40 degrees towards the east from the south. So it's in the southeast quadrant. So again, just for trigger, for diagram purpose, I draw my vector in the southeast quadrant. Now it's to figure out where the angle is. Again, it's 40 degrees towards the east from the south. So here is where my 40 degree angle goes. And again, this has a magnitude of four. All right, and so if I'm looking at my, my diagram here, it means this line right here will be my vertical component. So I can call that, uh, this is displacement one. So I'm gonna call that D1V. All right, I also have the horizontal component, which I will call D1H. All right, so I'm going to find those two. So here I go. All right, so again, let's uh, uh, might as well go with the D1V first. Not like it matters. All right, but again, I'm going to use trigonometry to find my D1V. And so again, I have the hypotenuse. That always happens. That you're always going to have the hypotenuse. So you're using, using sine or cos to find D1V or D1H. Depends on how you draw it up. All right, so uh, I look at D1V here. It is the adjacent. So uh, I'm going to have D1V is my adjacent. Hold on, I'm going to back that up a bit. Oops, making a mess. And so because I have the adjacent, I'm going to use cosine. So I'm going to have cos 40 degrees is equal to, there's my adjacent over my hypotenuse. All right, and essentially, because I do a fraction equaling a fraction here, or there's a lot of ways to solve it, 1 times D1V is D1V. Uh, that is going to equal four times the cos of 40 degrees. So let me see here. Four times the cos of 40 degrees is 3.06. All right. Now, D1V is a vector, right? It's the vertical component vector. So I'm even going to switch it here and make, well, not switch it, but add to it that it is a vector. Uh, we are talking about meters. And when I look at my diagram, it's headed south. All right, so now I'm going to find the horizontal component. It is the opposite across from the 40 degree angle, so I'm gonna have sine 40 degrees. Again, I got my D1H as my opposite, and the four is the hypotenuse, which again, if I did a fraction, equal can fraction, which means I cross multiplying. One times D1H is D1H. And so uh, D1H is going to equal 4 times sine 40. So I'm going to type that in my calculator here. 4 times sine 40 is 2.57. Again, meters. And I'm going to make it a vector. So I will look at my diagram. And my direction is east. All right. One vector down, got to do another one, and then put them together to create my resultant. All right. So here we go. Back up. I guess we'll go over here on this side. Let's see. Never enter stinky washrooms. All right. So let's have a look at my second vector, my second displacement vector, delta D2. All right, uh, which is 16 meters, 30 degrees of north of east. So I'm in the northeast quadrant here. We'll draw that. All right, uh, 30 degrees towards the north from the east. So towards the north, there's my 30 degree angle right there. I'm going to write the magnitude down. 
All right, so there's a sketch of my vector. Uh, once again, right along here, that is my horizontal component, which I'll call D2H. Oops. And going upwards, that will be my D2V, my vertical component. We'll put a little, they're vectors, so we'll put a little arrow over them. All right, so again, I'm going to repeat this process here, all right, to find my two vectors. Uh, so once again here, finding uh, D2V first, I guess. Uh, it's the opposite, so I'm going to have to use sine, because again, I'm going to have the uh, hypotenuse, so I'm going to have sine 30 degrees is equal to that D2V all over 16 this time. And so again, a little cross multiplying here. And so D2V uh, is going to equal 16 times sine 30. Sine 30 is half, isn't it? Uh, let's see here. Uh, D2V, oh, uh, yeah, it's the opposite. So uh, D, uh, what do we got here? D2V, 30 degrees towards the north from the east. Uh, oops, sine 30. 0.5, yeah, so we're going to have an 8. Again, I want to turn it into a factor, so we got meters. And the direction here, D2V is headed north. All right, uh, next up, I think I messed this up on the note, to be honest with you, which isn't good. <laughs> All right, uh, next up is the horizontal component. So we got cos, because it is the adjacent to that 30 degree angle. All right, which equals our D2H over 16. Uh, again, a little cross multiplying. So uh, D2H, I'm going to make it a vector. So cos 30 times 16. Uh, let's see here. Cos 30, uh, I'm going to get 13.86 meters. And how's my direction here? I look at my diagram, it is east. Woo. All right. So again, I messed my note up. I just looked at the note I posted. I crisscrossed them. You got to watch that. Even I did that. So what happens when I did it watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> All right. Now, we have our vertical components. We have our horizontal components of our two vectors. Now, to find this resultant, like I said, I'm going to combine the horizontals, combine the verticals, and then after that, I'm going to put together, construct my resultant. All right. So... Here we go. I'm going to have to uh, run out of room here. But uh, my resultant, DRV, which again stands for the vertical component of my resultant. The resultant is, again, putting these two together. So again, I'm running out of room here, but uh, yeah, I have 8 meters north and 3.06 meters south. So I'm going to have to subtract these two values, right? So I have 8 minus, because I count south as negative, 3.06, which uh, is going to be 4.94 meters, and because it's positive, it has to be north. All right, so again, I subtract the two because they were in the opposite direction. But then when I get to my horizontal components, I got a 2.57, and I got a 13.86. Because they're both east, they're both positive, so I'm going to combine the two and add them. Well, I'm combining both, but I'm, this time I'm going to add. And so uh, need a little calculator here. 13.86. Uh, uh, let's see here. Plus 2.57. I get 16.43. Again, meters, and they're positive, so it's got to be east. All right, now I've got the two horizontal and vertical components of my resultant. I can put them together and come up with my resultant displacement. So here we go. Again, I'm going to draw a diagram. Never enter stinky washrooms. All right, so uh, let's see here. A little diagram again. Uh, it doesn't matter which order I draw them in, but uh, let's see here. We got uh, up here. That's our north, 4.94. And then we go east, 16.43. And our result in here is going to be the red line I'm drawing. All 
There it is. That is our delta dr. All right. So again, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem here to find the magnitude. So my delta dr, I can square it because it's my hypotenuse. I take 4.94 squared plus 16.43 squared. All right, and of course, I'm just going to square those, add them together, and then take the square root. So uh, let's see here. So I got 4.94 squared, 24.4. All right, all right, and then this. All right, and let's see here. So square root, and I'm getting uh, 17.16. All right, so that is my magnitude. Again, I'm going to use trigonometry. So I'm going to find this angle right here. Again, you want the angle that's on your compass rows. All right, not, not this one. Well, this angle is 90 degree, but over here, that doesn't tell you anything. This angle does because it's on your compass rows. So again, I'm going to use trig. So I got tan theta because I have the opposite and I have the adjacent. So I got tan theta opposite 16.43 all over 4.94. All right, and my theta, my angle, again, a little trigonometry. Let's see here, 16.43 divided by 4.94. All right, tan inverse, 73.27. All right, so I've got my angle. I've got my magnitude. So here's my displacement. Delta dr or delta d, however you want to write it. The magnitude is 17.16 meters. The angle is 73.27 degrees. And again, now it's writing down the proper direction, right? It's that angle, 73.27, towards the east from the north. So east of north will be my displacement. All right. But we're on C now, part C, which won't take us that long. Here we go. Part C is we found the speed. I'm going to race a little bit here. Lastly, I want to find the velocity. So we're going to leave that up there. So again, finding this displacement here is exactly what we did last class, but now I'm into C, which is find the velocity, which simply means we take our displacement. It's always written as delta D. In this case, because we added to it, called it delta dr. Same thing. And so our velocity, I'm going to take this displacement that I worked so hard to get the 17.16 meters, uh, 73.27 degrees east of north. Whoops, east of north. And I divide it by our time, which was seven seconds. And then I get my velocity, which is, let me see here, I got 17.16. Divided by seven, 2.45, again, meters per second, 73.27 degrees east of north. Or as I've mentioned many times, I can also, re there's two ways you can write a direction. You can have it uh, towards the east from the north, or you can go from the north towards the east. So it could be 2.45 meters per second. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna have to subtract 90, from, or subtract 73.27 from 90. What do I get here? 16, I could have it as 16.73 degrees, which would be this angle right in here, and that would mean north of east. So again, there's always two ways to describe a vector. 
uh, because the direction you can look at it in this case, either starting north, moving towards the east, or starting east and moving towards the north. They work both ways. And there we go. So again, that is a kind of a recap. Well, it is a general recap of adding up vectors algebraically. Uh, we had to do that uh, the other day with displacement. Again, we had to do it with displacement. So simply in this case, we can divide by time uh, to find our velocity. But again, velocity is a vector just like displacement. Yeah.